If you shine a flashlight into space, what happens? That light doesn't just disappear. Could you detect a flashlight on Earth if you were on Mars or something? Well, if you had like a very good flashlight that was pretty strong and it had a nice tight beam, and if you led Mars a little bit because it's in orbit around the sun, just like Earth is, then about 182 seconds later, some photons would reach the Martian surface. But that beam would be so spread out now that maybe you detect one photon per square meter of Martian surface. But in theory, if you had a good enough detector, you would be able to sense some of your own flashlight photons on the surface of Mars all the way here from Earth. Imagine that, if you had a sufficient detector, you could do like SOS with a Martian 55 million kilometers away if they had a, a good enough detector. S O S. Hello. Did you also see Game of Thrones? Weird how they wussed out of Comic Con, huh? Anyways, I'm an alien too. You up? And welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and I shine a light of science and reason on them. Why was Danny's character arc so rushed and bad? Oh, and then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint! <laughs> Okay, mom, <laughs> you, get, you get it. But getting right into it, on the last episode of Because Science, I had a little BS PSA for you all, saying that superheroes are saving us the wrong way. The way that they quickly arrest our velocity when we're falling off a building or a bridge or to our doom or whatever, the way that they are doing it is too quick. Physics says it will decelerate us to death. I had a more physics approved approach. You can watch the video for that. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Wolf Rider and James XL Quest and others who say, hey, what about that pretty cool scene in Iron Man Trace where Iron Man is saving all those people who fell out of a plane? Well, going back and watching that scene from the film, I think it's actually pretty good. They give a lot of details that they wouldn't necessarily have to if they weren't trying to be as accurate as possible. Iron Man wants to link people together to increase drag, and there's even a throwaway line about electrifying their arms to stimulate their muscles such that they they can't let go of each other because the forces on their arms might be so large and there is an implied gradual deceleration and insertion into a medium, water, that would be softer than hitting something like the ground or landing in a cornfield or what have you. So there's a lot of detail there and it's physics approved, kind of, asterisk. <laughs> By far the most common comment though comes from a number of you who all say, well Kyle, you consider the case where someone is falling straight down and then has to be stopped very quickly. What if a superhero catches someone from the side or creates a kind of uh, diagonal or arc as they catch them? Would that help with this problem? The first thing to remember here is that no matter how you are falling, you will still have an acceleration pointed straight down at the center of the Earth. If you're falling straight down, it's pointed down. Even if you're moving horizontally, your acceleration is still pointed straight down, even though you might still have some component going horizontally. So no matter how you are falling and in which way, you are still gonna have to cancel out eventually that acceleration due to Earth's gravity. What is a limiting factor here in our consideration is that you only have a small amount of room to decelerate because you're falling straight towards the ground. But if you just try to catch someone and start moving them horizontally, many of you said, why don't you just change their momentum to be horizontal? Well, if you hit them, you're still accelerating them in a bad way. Instead of just accelerating them so they might split in half, now you're, it's still bad. Ferdinand Bull says, I was rock climbing and fell using a climbing rope. It was in a short free fall, very short. <laughs> There was a built-in stretch in the rope. When it caught me, I was still falling, and then I hit the end of the stretch. It was still a hell of a jerk, but I really do appreciate the elasticity. Yes, if you've ever rock climbed, rock climbing ropes take exactly what we're talking about into consideration. If you are falling straight down, if you're decelerated very quickly, it can be very damaging, potentially lethal, or at least injurious to your squishy, squishy body. That's why most climbing ropes, if you're falling on these ropes, they are called dynamic and not static, which means they do stretch. At the end of your fall, there is some give to the rope. And what that does, just like we said, is increase the amount of time over which you're decelerating, which lowers the Gs on you and therefore the forces on your body. And like climbing ropes, this could also work with something like Spider-Man's webbing, which is also very elastic, which would be good at decelerating people unless you're too late or Gwen Stacy. Captain America says, 
He looks much younger in this one. Captain America says, hey Thor, we have things to do. Stop making these videos and get ripped. Your fourth movie is announced and I don't want to have you looking like some potato. Hey, look, it's, it, look, here, here's the thing. If you want to get in shape like a Hollywood actor, it's actually really easy, which is what they don't tell you about. You just have to uh, work out six days a week for a couple hours a day, hire a personal trainer, a nutritionist, uh, get someone to pay for it. This could be upwards of $55,000 a year. Then stop drinking, stop eating anything that you like, uh, eat too much protein, and you do that for like six months to a year every single day and hate yourself for it, and you'll look great for two to three days at a time while you're also dehydrating yourself and lifting weights on set so you can look like that and promote an unhealthy and unattainable vision of the male physique. And <laughs> that's, just, that's just easy to do. I'm not a potato. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Nathan Flowers, who says, hey, love the show, but uh, I can't help but notice that the information you sent out, while entirely true, gives kind of a super villainy vibe. Information out to sway the masses that being saved by superheroes can be and is deadly. Hmm. Yes, Kyle, show the world the flaws of superheroes. Your journey towards supervillainous behavior has been noted and admired. I, I, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I guess looking back at my videos when you're saying you don't want superpowers and superheroes will kill you all the time. I mean, I guess you could construe that as being super villainous. Uh, hey, just one, one second. Yeah. Yeah, it's me. No, it's this, this guy asking a lot of questions. Nathan Flowers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that, that would be way too messy. Uh, I'm thinking trash compactor? No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Targeted orbital strike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's on the internet. Should be able to find him, no problem. Yeah, everyone's information is everywhere. Okay. Love you. Bye. So, for uh, making me think about all that, Nathan, and maybe making my perhaps super villainous intentions known to the world, you are indeed, at least for the next 45 minutes or so, a super nerd. How? <laughs> You're. I'm gonna get you. But of course, I'm not always right. I was talking with a friend of mine who has a horse, and I was like, how, what, you have a horse? A, ridiculous. You're not cool enough to have a horse. B, how many horses could there be in, say, Southern California? I thought there was like 300. There's 658,000 horses in California. I was so wrong about that. There's a million horses in Texas. What are they doing with all of them? Are they rodeoing with all those horses? This is devolving. So what did I get wrong last week? Well, the first correction comes from Gabriel Munoz, who says, well, Kyle, in the episode, if you're actually falling, your hair should have been flowing behind your head rather than hanging below it. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, clearly, the latter is more likely that you have some hair that's denser and heavier than the rest of your body. What is your hair made out of? Is neutron star material? Is that why it's so shiny and beautiful? No. You know. What it's called product brother and I have a whole lot of it in here look at this look at look 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 at look, look at how well this maintains its shape <sighs> maybe he's born with it Patrick Stafford has a problem who says wouldn't the material at the front of the bus when Shazam catches it in the movie Shazam have been punched through by Shazam instead of crumpling into the ground love the show Kyle if you're able to squeeze a hey Liv and Riley my whole family would poop our pants I'm not I'm not just gonna perform for you. So getting to your question. Yes, if Shazam was going to try to catch a bus and caught it with just his bare hands on a glass windshield, that's the word, it would be like effectively dropping a bus onto a human-sized nail. If he's a superhero and immovable and super strong, catching a bus like that would just be like piercing it. This is the same reason why uh, Superman and whatever that movie was would probably push right through the fuselage of the plane rather than saving it. So yes, you're absolutely right. Shazam would be more like a bus puncturer rather than a bus puncher. So our next correction comes from, hey, Liv and Riley. I'm not a monster. Consider your pants pooped. Our next correction comes from Nacho Problems because they're not mine. Another reason to dislike the Matrix sequels, when Neo caught Trinity, he was going fast enough to drag cars with his wake. Ignoring for a moment the tremendous collateral damage, and he puts lives at risk, at that velocity, instead of simply catching Trinity, he would have vaporized her. You know what, I didn't even think about that. Yes, in one of those Matrix sequels, Neo is going so fast, cars are flying behind him, so he's creating more than like hurricane force winds. So he must be traveling at some ridiculous clip. And when he impacts 
Trinity as she's falling off a building through a window. It's completely horizontal. This would be effectively like being hit by a car, except faster and harder, like a train, except worse, like a bomb, except it's, whoa. I mean, if, if Neo tried to catch you like that, it would be, like Keanu Reeves, breathtaking because you'd be dead. DBJ says, didn't they do this gag about Superman on Big Bang Theory like 10 years ago? Yeah, I know, I said, I said that. But uh, I mean, my, my point with pointing out uh, something like what the Big Bang Theory says, I was referencing them directly, is that if you actually do the math for Superman 1 when he catches Lois, they're decelerating over about a second. And if that's the case and she's falling at terminal velocity, the amount of Gs that she might pull in the perfect case wouldn't be necessarily fatal. In the Big Bang Theory, they say that when Superman caught Lois in this exact situation, she would be split into three different sections and that is definitely not the case if you actually do the math. So uh, what, the Big the big Bang ther Theory wrong about something? Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought their portrayal of, of nerds might be potentially incorrect or, or, or patronizing or, or problematic or hypocritical or chauvinistic or... Let's just put it all to one side. What about that? Fancy ladies do this. But the nerdiest correction of the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Clay Walton Hadlock, who says a lot, as you can see, but points out something that we didn't even consider. If a superhero has to fly to someone to catch them when they're falling, they first have to travel at least faster than that person is falling towards the ground at. Clay gets one thing wrong, that you wouldn't have to actually be at zero velocity when you met the person, just their same velocity in the same direction, you'd want to match their motion. But they point out that to get to someone falling off of a building, if they are going to hit the ground in two and a half seconds, you have to be traveling very, very fast through the air to get to someone that quickly to allow for enough time, which means that some of these superheroes, if they can fly, would also have to be like speedsters. We know that Superman can fly very, very quickly, but someone like a Batman or a Spider-Man, if they they can't swing or grapple towards someone quickly enough, there could be cases where they simply cannot save them at all. You can imagine a case like where Batman is falling with someone where if they're both just in free fall, Batman will never actually reach them and he'd have to grapple them and then grapple back up. But there are cases like that. So Clay, for pointing all of that out, you are indeed a super nerd. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's me again. You know, Clay's cool. No, he's fine. Yeah, yeah, focus on the flowers guy. Still? I don't know, make it look like an accident. A laser accident. Okay, love you, bye. Now, moving right along, this week's episode of Because Science Is, can Aquaman drown? <laughs> And I'm laughing because I know it sounds like a silly question at first, but uh, if you go a little bit deeper into the depths, <sighs> This analysis is actually surprisingly complicated. How does Aquaman breathe? How would gas transfer into his lungs or gills if you're trying to drown him? Can fish drown? How do fish drown? Is any of this possible? Is there a situation in which you could drown Aquaman? Huh, we get into it. I had words. <laughs> But nothing came out. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet. It's all about superheroes saving us the wrong way. And leave me all of your best nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. I do try to read most of them, almost all of them, within the first couple hours before I film this show. So get in there and get nerdy. And thanks to all of you who came out and saw me at Comic Con. If you did a meet and greet, if you saw one of the panels, the Expanse panel, the Science panel, if you came up and fist bump me, don't touch me. If you came up and fist bump me and said hello, thank you so much. I love the real world interaction that I get to experience in fleeting moments of escape from here. It's good. And don't forget, there ain't no party like a Kyle Hill party because a Kyle Hill party doesn't happen. Leave me alone.